Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala Ali wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bara habatifillah A beautiful question was raised and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless them, bless the, the questioner or the one seeking advice and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this advice to be of benefit and to be put on our scale of good deeds and not on our scale of bad deeds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with the bad Allah sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to traverse the path of the salaf al salih in our understanding of Islam and not become weak in compromising those esteemed principles left by the salaf in order to practice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion in a manner that pleases him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. The question was asked, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please may you give me advice as well as practical advice on dis disciplining your soul. I read that Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala said, your soul is your enemy. Once it finds you serious, it will obey you. And if it finds weakness from you, it will take you as prisoner. And this hit me. But I'm struggling a lot with establishing a good routine sleeping, eating Qur'an, and it's very problematic for me as I want to pursue and learn and study the Qur'an. Barakallah fikum, wa fikum barakallah. <clears throat> First and foremost, habatifillah, it's an excellent question because it is something that we all need to be reminded about and we all need to discipline our souls and uh, be conscious of our ibadah and conscious of our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and striving consciously to come closer to him. And may Allah bless us with that. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Uh, first, as far as the statement of Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, and there's countless, and I didn't have time to really research, unfortunately, to try to find this statement or something similar. Your soul is your enemy. Once it finds you serious, it will obey you. And if it finds weakness from you, it will take you as a prisoner. Uh, first and foremost, if this is uh, truly a statement of Ibn al-Qayyum, rahimahullah ta'ala, your soul is your enemy, not meaning that ala itlaq, you know, in general, that your soul, that you, yourself, and your soul is your enemy, but rather that your evil desires and the inclinations, those wicked inclinations, uh, the that we are all prone to that that is a uh can be a source of being our enemy and once it finds you serious meaning that you've disciplined it meaning that you're withholding yourself from your desires you want to commit zina you want to have boyfriends and girlfriends you want to smoke weed you want to do this you want to do that but yet you restrain yourself for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone you want to do all kind of things but instead you try to find the halal uh badil the halal needs for subjecting your nafs, then this uh, is a way of taming your soul. And this comes, as you mentioned, through exercising, through a good routine. And that routine, part of that routine is just doing righteous deeds, doing righteous deeds regularly. Even if it's something as small as the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, that smiling, uh, that this, uh, you know, smiling in the face of your brother is a charity. Likewise, giving salam. All of these things help to lighten the, help to discipline the soul and help to strengthen the iman and are a part of iman. And so when you find weakness in your iman and weakness in the way that you tame yourself, meaning that you're reckless, you're following your desires, you're watching the muharramat, you're looking at the muharramat, you're tasting and drinking and touching the muharramat, then that means you can become a prisoner to that. And the Prophet ﷺ said uh, that the Jahannam is surrounded by those things in which we, we love, you know, those things that we enjoy and we, we love. 
and of course gen, uh, jenna is surrounded by those things that we that requires that discipline of the soul that requires struggle and sacrifice you know to 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 pray five times a day to pray the fajr prayer and to leave your home as a man and leave the house when you want to sit with the family or you want to do this activity or do that all of that is a part of discipline in the soul so keep it your wajibat keep it your regular wajibat and setting yourself a program that you can complete don't put something out there that you can only do once and you've did it three times and then you can't achieve it but rather discipline yourself by doing something that is within your means and that and, the, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said loves those those deeds which are consistent that the believer can can accomplish rather than doing a whole bunch of deeds and then leaving it forever and this holy month of Ramadan is a beautiful time for that. And so now I want to talk about one of the most important things for helping to disciplining the soul. And as part as an easy part of that regimen, and that is making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the fawa'id and the benefits of dhikr. So I just want to mention uh, a few benefits, and there's countless. Uh, let, let's start some of those fawa'id as Imam Ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned in his kitab Wabil Asayb. He, he mentioned first, أَنْهُ يَطْرَدُ الشَّيْطَانَ وَيَقْمَعُهُ وَيَقْصِرُهُ That first, that dhikr, by making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, you know, it belittles the shaitan, it breaks him down, and it makes him flee. So this is a way to fight back against the shaitan. And of course, fight back against your nafs. So, Dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing, أَنْهُ يَرْضِي رَحْمَانَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ The second thing is that it pleases Ar-Rahman, the most merciful, by making dhikr of him. And dhikr is so easy. SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika la la muku la alhamhu ala kulli shayin kathir. All of this is a part of dhikr. All of this is a part of dhikr of Ar-Rahman. أَنْهُ يُزِيلَ الْهَمْ وَالْغَمْ عن القلب وأنه يجلب للقلب الفرح والسرور والنشاط. This is very important, and this is a part of that discipline of the soul, and some of those benefits of the discipline in the soul and the vicar is that it takes away, you know, that uh, that that the depression and depression and anxiety from the heart. By making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you're making true, you're, you're making consistent dhikr, and you're being sincere, you're really opening your heart up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this helps to remove that anxiety that you face because you know that that's greater. Dhikr Allah al-Akbar. You know, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's much greater than all these problems, all these difficulties, all this anxiety that we feel in our lives and sadness and other, and anger and whatever, all these 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 emotions. that Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that helps that, that heart. And that it moves the heart to happiness. And nashat, you know, ha activity, you know, vibrance, and, 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 you know, makes your heart alive and brings you happiness and joy by making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with an open heart. Not just, you know, on the tongue, but dhikr with the heart and the tongue. And then, you know, implementing your iman on your limbs. Anhu yaqwi al qalb al badan. That also dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it strengthens the heart and it strengthens the body. Uh, likewise, dhikr annahu yanawar al waj wa qalb. Excuse me. Dhikr, it brings light to the heart. And it brings light to the face, the one, the the dhakirin, the dhakirat. Ahl iman. When you see somebody who is who makes dhikr a lot, and you see, you you can some you can tell that sometimes. Sometimes Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brings that light to those people, those people you want to be around and you want to emulate, because they are emulating the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, also, 
Victor, it brings the, you know, it brings this light to the face and it get, brings you sweetness. Because the one who's truly making dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a part of disciplining that soul, because dhikr, that's regular. And I think that's one of the most important things as far as making your plan with the Quran and sleeping and eating, disciplining yourself. Yes, eat little. That's from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't eat to be obese and strive to be healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. And try to gain sleep. And read Kitabillah. Fit it into your life, at least a little bit. Even if it's one ayat. Sometimes. Some people are so busy and they get so distracted. But don't make hajr of the Quran. But the dhikr is the easiest thing that you can do all the time. You could be hiking and making dhikr. You could be going to work and making dhikr. You could be coming back from work and making dhikr. You could be going to make wudu and make dhikr. You make dhikr after wudu. Dhikr, that's open for you. And these are some of those many benefits of it. Likewise, dhikr, it makes a person inherit muhabba, love. And that is the ruh of Islam. It is the, the soul of Islam, is that love, that love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And having the, the comfort in one's heart from the ibadah, from their ubudiyatillah from their worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their humility to Allah, then, wala khawfun alayhim, wala hum yahzirun. There's no fear upon those real, the sadiqeen in iman. Those dhakirin, wa dhakirat, those people who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often, that they, they, they don't have that fear of the dunya, fear of poverty, fear of, of, of uh, you know, physical fear from people, Fear of oppression, fear of this, fear of that. Because they are comforted with their iman and their dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last that I want to mention is that dhikr, a person who makes dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they inherit their need to come back to Allah, their tawbah. They're coming back to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the leather to the iman, and the 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 beauty of iman. So all of that is a part of discipline in the soul, and I hope that is beneficial to you. And may Allah subhanahu wa taala bless us all with alim and nafi, ruskin tayyib, wa amal al And may Allah bless us to discipline our souls and do those things which please Him. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam ala Nabiyyina Muhammad.